presented by GhostBed.com. What is up? Welcome to the Drinking Bros Sports Major League Baseball Show, episode number two. Uh, we are still yeah. firmly in the off season. Well, I guess spring training now, so it's not really the off season. Uh, either way, I am your host, uh, Rob Fox, and I am joined by Co Drinking Bro King, or I don't know. Uh, whatever. I, I'm non-binary, so I don't know if non- king is the right word. That's yeah. fair. Uh, um, but Dan Holloway and and his bigger gun. Last, yeah. last week, it was just the pistol on the table. Yeah, I keep upgrading. I'm going to have a fucking tank in here at the end of the season. <laughs> uh, this is a Sons of Liberty Gunworks uh, M4, by the way, with a nice Vortex 1x6 optic on it. Very nice. Very pretty. I just picked it up today. That's why it's here. I don't just travel around and put my guns on display. But I figured since I had it here, it may as well, right? Might as well show it I off. Like, I love these guys. Mike Maholsky is a good buddy of mine. And they make great weapons, some of the best. Down speaking of great San weapons, Antonio? yeah, they're in San Antonio. Yeah. Uh, speaking of great weapons, Bryce Wilson looked really good today. I don't know if you got to watch any of that game or not. I am. I'm not. I, this is like the last topic on the rundown, but mm. I'm really not a big spring training watcher. Although I do love Bryce Wil- Bryce Wilson, yeah. pitcher for the Braves. If yeah. you remember last year, went out and just hucked, six innings of very good hucked, baseball. Yeah. Hucked strikes. I was talking to my yeah. buddy during that game last year. I was like, man, I, I did not see this coming. And he's like, that's what you need sometimes, just a mm-hmm. big, dumb redneck yeah. to come out and just throw heat. Yeah. I mean, he's, he throws what is known in the industry as a heavy ball, yeah. whatever you want to call that, meaning it's a good sinker. Like you, it, it doesn't – there's not a lot of the, – the ball's not flat through the strike zone. It's yeah. sinking through the strike zone, which means it's, it feels heavier when you hit it. Um, he's – I think he's going to be – a pretty good fucking Major League Baseball player. I low-key like him better than Kyle Wright, if we're talking Braves uh, kind of on the cusp pitchers right now. Right. Um, although, I guess Kyle Wright is kind of the more, like, the sexier repertoire. Right, he's pitches. got more pitches, yeah. but, I mean, Smoltz's theory back in the day was, I'm not going to get beat trying to pitch to your weakness. I'm going to get beat trying to pitch to your to my strength. So, there have been pitchers that ha- that are two pitch guys with a kind of okay third pitch that have had very good success in the major leagues now Smoltz was not one of those guys he had a splitter a fastball and a very good slider but Tom Glavin for example now he's a crafty lefty but it's fastball changeup from that guy his I mean, curveball Maddox was the same way Maddox really only worked with two pitches he that's ha- he had technically more. technically speaking that is true but Gla- our Maddox threw six different types of fastball right yeah so I don't know I, he's in a league of his own and it's not females right <laughs> uh <clears throat> anyways i i like to watch spring training for a couple of reasons i don't really pay attention to the stats that much what i pay attention to is for a hitter i'm looking at are they selective at the plate or are they just swinging at everything because a guy can go out and hit seven ten home runs in spring training like oh fuck he really nailed it half of those home runs came fifth inning or later which is against bullshit pitching and you know a lot of them came against just fat groove fastballs dudes trying to get in the zone right i'm looking for a guy who's going deep in counts who is only swinging strikes who's batting average on balls and plays also high right so if you're if you see guys who average four plus pitches per at bat and their ba bip is really high that person's probably looking forward to having a good season that's the kind of shit to look for in a, in a pitcher it's location right I'm not really worried about him giving up home runs or fucking because they, whatever work, the they fuck. work on shit Right, yeah. They don't give a fuck about the outcome no. of these games. Especially if you're a young guy, you're trying to make a point maybe. But if you're an established guy, then they don't care about the... It's all... They're, the, just, they're fine-tuning shit. Yeah, yeah. So that's why, that's why, as a fucking baseball fan, that's why I like watching this shit so much. Because there's so much interesting shit going on. And you get to... I like to watch how, particularly the pitchers, are experimenting with shit early on. Because it tells you what they feel confident on and what they don't. Yeah. Right? And if you see something early in spring training, like if Bryce Wilson's trying to use his overhand curve, his 12 to 6 curve, as a get me over pitch here, and he maybe gives up four or five home runs, but towards the end of spring training, you start seeing him dump into that lower left hand quadrant of the strike zone. I'm like, all right, this kid's got a fucking rhythm now. That is a, it's a big pitch to be able to go up against a power hitter and dump that 12 to 6 in the lower uh, left hand side of the strike zone and get that first strike change his eye level and then throw a high fastball after or, or whatever it is that is a big deal for these guys to be able to do that early in the season so that's what i look for so i love spring training but it's because i'm autistic <laughs> i 
I just, I don't know. But, well, first off, you know, me and Dan, uh, Paper Hands, Dan, Dan Register do mm. a do a college basketball show. Mm. So I'm I'm barely even in baseball right, mode yeah. at this point. I'm still trying to watch the end of that show. But also, I guess it's kind of, I like it. I almost like spring training better when my team is shitty. Right. Because what what there's not much to decide. You get to see the young guys, yeah, too. There, there's not much to decide on yeah. the Braves mm. right now, for example. Uh, you want to see the battles for positions, is what you're saying. Yeah. And, and also, like, I guess I could, I mean, but like Freed and Soroka and, you know, they're, they're, they're established major leaguers at this point. They're not. The only, the only thing that's not established on the Braves team right now is, in my opinion, third base. Like, I think that's the only position that might change during the season. I, th- um, I think you're going to see Riley and Lamb splitting maybe like 100 games to 60 games or something. Like, it's going to be not a f- straight up yeah. platoon, but yeah. I would agree with that. And I would I would expect to see I mean they've got they've got some guys in the minors as well, but I don't think anybody ready at a corner position to come up, but they have I mean, well, I guess technically Pablo Sandoval is in their minor league system still. <laughs> yeah. If he happened to lose eighty or ninety pounds in the off season, <laughs> he might be a threat, but he didn't. I don't want him to though. Hell no, man. That guy's know. like I don't I don't it's not even about uh his current ability. The guy clearly had a lot of talent athletically, and he just ate it away. Yeah. So I don't really respect that, man. You honestly. don't respect that? No, don't. I kind of enjoy – I guess I don't necessarily respect that, but I always enjoyed, like, as a, as a like, fairly lazy person uh, mm-hmm. who people have, have been like, oh, Rob, you're talented, like my mom. Um, <laughs> I've always enjoyed, uh, like, J- the J.R. Smiths of the world. Right. Like, freaks who are just <laughs> – J.R. <laughs> Smith just shows up. And he has no idea what's going on. Right. And then he just hits the eighth most most three pointers in the history of the NBA. Right. right. Like you, if you if you just flip on the television in the middle of any of one of his games throughout his entire career, he could either be dominating or be completely lost in the court. Somehow he's the eight. I think he's eighth on the all time three point list. If okay. I'm not I have to look that up. Yeah. But I mean, I, I buy it because he is. A, I mean, but like if you put Kobe Bryant's brain in his body, mm. I mean, like he had every. He was he was pre uh, one and done rule. Right, so he was a high school draft pick, yep. a fucking freak. Like I, I just enjoy that. I kind of enjoy the guys that are just like, you know what? Like yeah. I can coast my way to forty million dollars. Yeah, he's. I mean, honestly, it's more these days. It's way more than that. Um, let's see, not eighth. Where is he? He's on this list somewhere. God damn it. Uh, anyways, back to baseball. <clears throat> there are some other things. I hate. I don't want to go full brave on you because I know you guys have. Uh, there's a lot of different teams represented out there, but. One of the interesting things to me about spring training as well is to see how the daily lineup shakes out, if there's any injuries or whatever. And then you can kind of see where teams start, like a team like the Braves that know they're going to be in contention, you got to start strate- uh, strategizing about what you're going to do before the uh, trade deadline, right? So the Braves do have uh, uh, Johan Com- Camargo, and they also have Ender Inciarte. Ender Inciarte is a former two, three-time gold glover, right? He is a very useful tool to somebody that needs him. I don't think the Braves do need him. No. Frankly. Well, because they're going to use Christian, Christian Pache P- now. Pache, yeah. yeah. So if that's the case and you get a month or two in and Pache's keeping like a 260 to 280 batting average, his his, his on-base percentage is somewhere in the mid-300s, like 330 to 360 range, they're going to keep him out there because he plays great defense. Now in Enciarte could be a big – piece for some other team that needs him right they and could get some they could get a closer for something like yeah. that and he you know hasn't I mean? diminished defensively no he's his great. bat is is fucking swiss cheese now but, yeah but i mean like he's but still... i think that's a matter of it's been a combination of injuries and not getting playing time when he came back i mean he's... he hasn't had a consistent season in a long time yeah. and he was a notorious when he was a start with the braves uh the second half guy yeah well like... yes for sure so it'll be interesting to see how that goes but that's again. I love. I, there's not a whole lot of battles on the Braves, but there are some interesting elements. I guess I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, it's more interesting if you're like, say, the Cardinals, mm. right? And you're a good team, but you aren't complete. Like, there's like five complete teams in, yeah. in the major leagues right now, and the yeah. Braves are one of them. Yep. But like, you know, the, if you're the Cardinals or the White Sox, who we'll talk about later, uh, we have a lot of Tony Larusa talk scheduled for this because we kind of we forgot to cover that last time. Um, that Larusa is back on the bench. Um, which is the only thing he's allowed to uh, be behind the steering wheel of the yeah, baseball team. Yeah, uh, um, that's weird. I mean, why? I don't know why he's back doing this that's stuff. Bizarre. Man. Well, we we'll talk about it, but yeah. uh, that's not the big news. 
the big the biggest thing we have to cover today is uh, as far as a drinking bros sports show goes this is about as on fucking brand as it could be for yep. for us uh dick pick mick deep d pick mick is the uh title episode dick pick mick uh is, is what it, it represents dick pick mick is the uh, nickname that former New York Mets manager and current Los Angeles Angels pitching coach Mickey Calloway, who has had a meteoric rise in baseball as a coach, mm-hmm. uh, has been acu- he Mickey Calloway has been accused of sending nudes of himself, uh, along with other inappropriate text messages, to at least three women confirmed uh, who work in sports media. But the presumption is there's a lot more. Yes, and two other women have officially come out and said the 45-year-old Calloway, like 45 is in he's 45 today. Uh, aggressively pursued them, and he he has been a major league coach for like I think like eight or nine years or something yeah. like that. So when I say meteor rise, I like he he was hot. Yeah. And what's funny is like we're gonna get into a lot of meathead shit about Mickey Callaway, mm. but he's actually a huge like sabermetrics analytics mm. guy, big film guy, big numbers, big like you know spin rate type of guy. Like this guy is weirdly as far as baseball goes like a fucking thinker, mm. but when it comes to his dick. Not so much, right? Yeah. No. I mean, one of the funniest part. I mean, there's so many different things going on here, but the Athletic reported that there was a man with whom uh, Mick was having an affair with his wife. Yeah. Right. That found a bunch of pornographic images from him to her on the phone or email computer. Who the fuck knows where he found it? But uh, then forwarded it to Major League Baseball and the Indians organization. So this is this was in 2017. Yeah. That was 2017. Now look. That was prior yeah. to him being hired as the Mets manager. Correct, but even if that were the case, Major League Baseball is not going to uh, uh, suspend a, a, a head coach, a manager, because he fucks somebody's wife. No. You know what I mean? It's I a- mean, if he rapes somebody's wife, sure, obviously he's going to jail for that shit. But in most states, that's not like illegal or anything. Not that it's ethical, but it's certainly not illegal. They're not going to do anything about that. But this has not been recent. It's been going on for some time. For a long. Point. At least four years. A long, <laughs> right. long Probably time. as long as he's had any sort of popularity at all, because he seems like that kind of guy. Do you know how long he's had popularity? Uh, about eight years. No. Uh, he was a top 15 high school baseball player in the country. For sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like He was, according to the story, like a local mm-hmm. celebrity in Memphis, right. I want to say. Played at Ole Miss, and Ole Miss is a – a pretty big baseball school. I don't know if you've ever seen the videos of them like oh, yeah. celebrating home runs yeah. and shit like that. Uh, that's definitely a sports mm-hmm. uh, trip I need to make. He was point. a pitcher, though. Well, you know, Ross says Ole Miss is right there with Arizona State. Really? Yep, that's what he says. Now, I've never been. You know, I've been to the Grove for nope. a football game? Nope. It's pretty much heaven. Like, as far as, like, sporting event things mm-hmm. I've been to go, I'd put it in the top three. And I've been to a lot. I've been, I'd put it in the top three or four along with, like, the Kentucky Derby and – and uh, um, fuck, I don't know. Game seven of the World Series. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's probably the other two big ones that I've been to that I that that were like super exciting. The Super Bowl was actually kind of underwhelming. Well, Mickey wasn't that great of a pitcher. No, no. I mean, six twenty seven career ERA. Uh, kind of half starter, half not. I mean, you know, one point four eight strikeouts per walk. That's good. Uh, uh, but four walks per nine innings. His whip was like 1.7. Those are trash numbers. He was not very good. But I think he was trying to kind of J.R. Smith a little bit. Maybe, yeah, but you can't do that in baseball. No. I mean, it's I, – I would talk – so my pitching coach in high, in before high school and then a little bit in high school uh, was a guy named uh, uh, Jose Alvarez. He was a relief pitcher for the Braves yeah. back in the 80s, right? And he was, one of the, he was one of the dudes that crossed the picket line in 94 too. So – he was legit for like 16 years or so. He was in, up and down in the Braves organization. I would go down to Clearwater where their spring training is, and uh, I remember this one time, uh, Maddox explaining how he, he was showing how he landed with his left foot during his delivery, and it would, he would draw three lines in the sand that were basically, or the dirt rather, that are basically like an inch apart. And he goes, yeah, if I want to throw inside, I step here. I'll throw outside, I step there. I'm like, excuse me? And he goes, I, and I never step in the middle because you should never throw the ball down the middle, no matter what, even if it's ball four and the bases are loaded. I'm like, all right, cool. That's a good thing. I understand. <laughs> I mean, he, you're talking like God is telling you how to do things. And I'm like, uh, shit. Yeah, like right? literally. But it, it is incredible, that whole scenario. But there are some guys that can probably 
maybe Randy Johnson, if you throw a hundred miles per hour, you can probably take it a little bit easier on the strategy. But for a guy like Maddox, not that he couldn't throw 94, 95, but he threw 91 on purpose. Right. Right. Uh, so for that guy, it is a constant 3d 40 chess battle in his head. He doesn't, he's not thinking about that batter's next at bat. He's thinking about fucking six weeks from now, we're playing this guy at his, at his place instead of here. And if I throw this pitch now, I'm going to burn that pitch. He's going to remember it then. I can get him out with something else now. I'm going to throw that pitch now. That is fucking psycho behavior. You, you know he did that to Bagwell, right? Yeah. He fucked Bagwell's whole he, career up. There was one year they were due to play him in the NLDS. Yeah. And, and Maddox let Bagwell hit a home run yep. off of him in the regular season. Just to set him up, yeah. Because he knew that Bagwell was going to be looking for that pitch yep. for the entire rest yep. of the fucking time. And he threw a pitch. It was a slider that he threw him to get him out. And he didn't throw sliders very often. I mean, yep. it's, this guy... That, that's the kind of commitment it takes to do that job. So you can't come in and J.R. Smith it. Like no. Pablo Sandoval is the J.R. Smith <laughs> right. of baseball, and it just doesn't work over time. Yeah. The, the only difference between Maddox being psycho and, and um, like, say, Kobe or Michael Jordan mm. being psycho is that Jordan was, like, angry, and Maddox was like, this is funny. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you've ever a troll. I don't know if you've ever seen that video of uh, uh, Ruben. No, Greg Maddox never showed me his muff, but uh, – Mike Remlinger came to my combat outpost, like out in the literal shit in uh, Iraq one time. And he, was, he just told us stories about how Maddox would sneak up on people in the showers and piss on the back of their legs and shit. And he would re he refused to manscape. So he would you he would get like a pick and pick out his pubes. So they would just be massive. They call him the mad pisser. That was his nickname on the Braves. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, Wait, wait, what the fuck we're talking about? Callaway. Uh, Callaway, yeah, this guy is just, I mean, so he I was, get it, he I was, get it. He was both consensually a dirtbag, but also yeah. harassing women. So yeah. Essentially, this guy, like, could not control his dick. Well, tell me some of the details of this, because I, I haven't really read into it. So it's worth noting, first off, that he was either engaged or married throughout all of this. <laughs> with children. Okay. Right? All right, so okay. this is like a piece of shit guy. Mm -hmm. First one is... He would, was known to like constantly often walk around the locker room and ask players, where's the beef? Because beef is apparently like not just the Mets or Indians term. It's like the MLB term for pussy. Mm. Just constantly. Okay. Like, he'd just be like, hey, where's the beef, guys? We're yeah. going to watch video in five minutes. Um, which is like just a weird fucking thing to call. That's pretty weird, yeah. Yeah. Um, he would often check out players' girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and flirt with women in the stands, which is how he will get into this in a little bit, but how he met the, uh, I think it, uh, some, the guy's wife or whatever. Right. Um, pretty much as soon as Callaway got to the big leagues with the Indians. And by the way, he, he like I said, meteoric rise got up in his, I think early thirties. He mm. was on the Indians. Um, he super charming, inter great interviewer. Right. And was like, for whatever reason, he was shitty as a player, but really did his homework as a coach. Um, There's a lot of pitchers and catchers that turn into good managers. Yeah. Right. Because they understand the game and how it works. It uh, makes sense. Which is weird because when you look at pictures of this guy, and I encourage you to, uh, to Google him, he, he looks like the biggest fucking meat. Like, dumb yeah, he looks like a fuck. He looks like, uh, what, what's that asshole that used to play for the Red Sox that's now a manager? Uh, Veritech? No. Uh, fuck. I'll, Kapler? I'll, yeah, Gabe, Gabe Kapler. Kapler? Yeah. yeah. Gabe Kapler is like a, an Adonis chiseled out figure. Looks like he probably couldn't write his own name in crayon, <laughs> right. to be honest. But it happens to be a pretty decent Major League Baseball manager, you know. Even be able to Dan, I was like, Dan, do you agree with that? He's he's <laughs> fine, man. He's not a great manager, but he's he's fine. Phil Phillies fans fucking hated him. Yeah, because the Phillies suck. Okay, the Phillies. The suck. Phillies aren't the Mets, though. Don't don't the spend Phillies all that money on Andrew McCutcheon, and you won't have to fucking worry about it, <laughs> asshole. You guys have had a run of bad luck ever since that World Series, too. Fucking Howard's out. Utley's out yeah. for no reason. I mean, Ever. Holiday's bad out stuff. Fucking life. Cliff Lee never really lived up to his potential there either. Holiday died. Yeah, Fuck, man. Holiday. Uh, but anyway, so he, as soon as Callaway got on the Indians, he was immediately sliding into the LinkedIn DMs of women who worked there, which is, I feel like, an extra fucking thirsty move. He got a, he got a rep really, really fast with the women in the Indians' front office. Um, one of them went on record with the athletics saying it didn't this is maybe my favorite quote little thing it didn't matter what you looked like what size you were <laughs> whether you were white or black asian or hispanic he'd be creepy towards you so again this guy was just like it's borderline you know that south park episode where it's like all the celebrities just say they're sex addicts yeah yeah, yeah. That, yeah. like this is pretty much like 
he might actually be a sex addict. Uh, well, I mean, maybe. Or maybe he just, you know, like the fuck. I mean, it doesn't make you an addict. I like uh, to do all sorts of things, and I do them on a regular basis. But if I can't do them at the time, I won't. And if I don't have access to them, it doesn't ruin my day. I feel like this guy is Tiger Woods banging Waffle House waitresses <laughs> just because I, I want to know where he grew up. Right, Memphis. What, what his, well, you what, mean like the house, or like whatever, yeah. what his life was like? Because did he have a dad like fucking Tiger Woods' dad, who was banging whores in the fucking RV when he's fucking putting? You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> On the side of the fucking uh, par three there. Uh, I look. Clearly, there's something going on with this dude. Yeah. Now, what what's gonna happen now? Because he's the pitching coach for the Angels right now. He right? is currently suspended, <laughs> pending the investigation of the harassment claims. Okay. Um. Let's see. Oh, he was also bringing, bringing while he was married, a side piece on road trips. So it wasn't like he had a woman in every... Chipper Jones was doing that shit. Was he? Fuck yeah. It wasn't a, like a girl in every port. It was He was bringing the girl to the ports. Oh, no. That, that I don't know about. But Michael Jordan was doing that. Okay. Yeah. Michael Jordan had a fucking side piece that he brought with him. Holy shit. Trace Thompson, Clay Thompson's uh, younger brother. I don't yeah. know. But he was a baseball player. He had a 450-foot home run today. I thought he was out of baseball. Oh, Congratulations. Geez, Good for him. Well, it's spring training. Nobody cares. Um, all the Indians players' wives, when he was the pitching coach, fucking hated Callaway. Oh, so did he, did he pull? So who was the guy that fucked LeBron's mom? Delonte West. Yeah, Delonte West. Yeah. Is it like that? Delonte West doesn't play basketball anymore, by right. the way, because he fucked LeBron James' mom. He's in jail. Well, he's in jail, yeah, but probably not because of that mom thing. What did he do? Did he rob a fucking... I thought Cuban helped him. Because, you know... I thought bef Cubes... Before, before you get into that, Rex Chapman has been talking a lot of shit in politics. I mean, he does that on Twitter, right? He's got a very yeah. active Twitter account. That, he's, he's, he's pretty bold for a guy that got caught stealing fucking iPads from Apple <laughs> to sell on eBay because of his gambling debts, right? Yeah, he's... Like, all of a sudden, he's the fucking moral authority? Shut right. the fuck up, Rex Chapman, you cunt. And then he just steals other people's memes and Oh, videos. yeah, he's... Yeah, he's basically fucking, I mean, you know, a, a, a recycled meme site, yes. He is the worst, but Delonte West is actually... Uh, I remember... I think he got pulled over on his motorcycle with like 18 different guns. <laughs> oh my god! But he is homeless now, and I think Mark Cuban did help him. Cubes out. took him in. I yeah. mean, what do you mean by helped him out? He just like got him a house or some shit. He mm, picked him Del up. Delante was living with him, I think, for a little while, and put him in, and then he put him in rehab and shit like that. But yeah, so wow, the Indians players' wives hated this dude because he was. I don't know, probably walking up into the fucking stands. I mean, like a lot of beef here. Smells, <laughs> like, smells like fucking fish. <laughs> While there's like a fucking toddler on their lap, you know, like Corey Kluber or whatever I've, it is. I've done it too, man. Look, <laughs> every time somebody comes in with their family, I'm like, hey, your wife, really nice. And the wife's standing right there. I'm like, look, fucking get after it tonight, man. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> if you don't, I will. I think it was. It makes people feel really good about themselves. I appreciate that. My wife could use that right yeah, now. Yeah, when she comes honest. in, I'll be like, hey, I'll fucking, I don't care if you're pregnant or not. I'm going to get him pregnant <laughs> just so you guys can be equal. And then she'll probably leave and call the police. I yeah. Would imagine, yeah. That's right. She'll be like, I don't care how much they pay you. Please just. Get <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Uh, he was also texting nudes literally right before games, sending full frontals in locker room mirrors from the, from what the Jacob Seald or whatever it is. And uh, is it, is it still, I think it's, uh, well, it's I'm sure it has now. some kind of fucking corporate name yeah. at this point. But yeah, yeah if it's from the Indian facility. This is my favorite story. This is where it goes from like, I mean, like, he was a, he's a serial harasser, so he's a piece of shit for that. But this is, like, funny piece of shit to me. And I, and I don't feel bad for the victim in this story mm. at all. He met a woman at spring, in, at spring training in Arizona in 2014. That's where the Indians do it. She was with her very young, very young son looking for autographs. The next year, she came back and was like, hey, remember me? And she gave, she gave him her number. He asked for it. She gave him her number. Because Callaway offered to come to her kid's t-ball game and, like, give pointers or some shit. Now, at some point, your mind has to rebel, <laughs> right. right? And say, no, well, he's not coming to t-ball because there's no pointers to be given. For, for from to a, a fucking five-year-old? From a pitcher to t-ball because there is no pitcher in t-ball, goddammit. What could he teach anything to a five-year-old? I don't know. I mean, I've taught Put a lot. Put your elbow of, up? I taught a lot of five-year-olds how to, like, roll joints and shit. But, uh, you know, that was just <laughs> court-ordered stuff. Right. That's not a big deal. No, there's nothing to teach a five-year-old about baseball. You just, I guess, 
you throw the ball as much as possible. That's what you should do. Swing the bat and throw the ball as much as right. possible because those, the building up the the muscles around your shoulder and developing uh, a, a good resistance in in the joint in your shoulder and then also uh, developing the wrist and forearm strength. So people talk about Hank Aaron and why he was so great. He wasn't a big guy, but he hit. 20 home runs in 20 consecutive seasons, 21 consecutive seasons, right? And it's because he had wrists like Houdini. The reason Houdini was able to break out of the cuffs all the time is because he would flex his wrists when they put them on, and he would relax them and be able to slide right out. That's how much muscle he had in his wrist. Houdini would have been a great baseball player had he not died of AIDS. Um, wait. Took too many. Yeah, it was AIDS. Was it AIDS? He tried to escape. He gave himself AIDS, tried to escape it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that was it. Locked himself in a fucking in a glass casket full of AIDS yeah. and he couldn't get out. No. Uh, that's really funny that, um, that the players, the pitchers wives hated him. Yeah. They were like, he is a huge piece of shit. So how did he get promoted after he was that? Cause he awesome. was, mm. he was a mm. great coach. Terry Francona loved him. I'm about to get into that. Terry Francona fucking loved him. He, and he was a charmer. Like he got the job after first interviews constantly, but here's the fucked up part, by the way, about the T-ball thing. Mm. So the woman and her husband, so you're talking about the mind rebelling, the woman and her husband were like hyped that Mickey Calloway was going to come to their fucking five-year-old's game. How did the husband's mind I don't know. not <laughs> I don't know. understand? I mean, maybe was he was a cuck and he was trying to get her in on it well, secretly and it just didn't work out. He's, he's kind of, he, he's going to get cucked real hard. So uh, obviously... Callaway, not obviously, I guess, but Callaway and the woman start banging. Like, mm -hmm. she starts cheating on her husband with Callaway. Right. They start fucking. Husband finds out that Callaway's fucking her, uh, I think, by finding the dick pics that Callaway was sending, <laughs> right? And by the way, Callaway was not a, a two woman man at this point. Like, he was, she was one of many that he was just like banging left and right. Mm -hmm. So he found the dick pics. Hus the husband confronts Callaway via text and is like, hey, man, what the fuck? Stop doing this. And um, they, they go through, like, a back and forth. And, like, Callaway's like, I got to tell the MLB because this is an MLB phone or something right. like that. Nothing comes of it. So this husband, with no options left of how to, like, get back at Mickey Callaway, just starts calling the Cleveland Indians customer service. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> no. Like their... Their like, fan services department. Like just the, the hotline. He, he, got, he went into the yellow pages yes. for a phone number to call because they wouldn't respond to his shit? Yes. Now, who's the guy? What does he do for a living? I don't I, They didn't say. They kept The athletic kept like everyone anonymous except Jesus for Mr. Callaway. Christ. So he, car he starts calling the Indians fan service, and they're like, uh, how can I help you today? And he's like, yeah, your pitching coach is fucking my wife and sending her dick pics. And he was, he would call, he was calling them almost every day to the point where they couldn't ignore it the whole fucking phone bank at, at, that works for the Indians, like, knew about it. So do you think they had uh, one of those, they changed their dial options? So for one, if you have ticket sales issues, for one, if it's merchandise, press two. If it's, if it's Mickey Holloway, send a dick pic to your wife, please, plus three, right? Yeah, pretty much. Well, I mean, look, if you're going to do something, do it right, I guess. <laughs> I mean, why half-ass anything? Just send dick pics to everybody. Yeah. I mean, I don't... Wow. He was sending, he was, and he was sending like dick pics the way like your uncle sends chain emails, <laughs> like it's to the whole fucking like contact list. Like and a fucking slut on Snapchat. Pretty much. Yeah. Good so this guy eventually it couldn't be ignored by the GM and Terry Francona, right. who's the manager of the Indians. Francona, <laughs> Francona didn't want to lose his pitching coach. And so he offered to call the guy and be like, Hey man, I'm sorry that Mickey fucked your wife. And so the Indians, he, Francona told the Indians, he's like, I'll call him and, and apologize, right? right would he, would right, he like right. a call from me? Well, I mean, Terry Francona is correct, though, right? What? He doesn't want to lose his pitching coach here over the fact that some dude's wife wanted to fuck somebody. Look, no, that, yeah, he unless the woman was saying that Mickey raped her, which clearly is not the case because that would absolutely have been reported. It was consensual sex between two adults. Now, whether it's ethical or not is one question, but obviously the answer is no, but fucking you know the woman was involved right so who the fuck is it she should be apologizing to her husband that dude right. mickey calloway didn't convince her with this t-ball bullshit to fucking suck his dick what That's if her son actually did just start raking oh man with <laughs> and it's like a it's like almost like a a, a blindside kind of situation right right like just does, does mickey get fucking points on the back end of his contract or how does that work i I don't know. I don't it, know. it really is like uh, like just i i still don't understand how the husband didn't understand like mickey calloway 
isn't going to make your son a better t-ball player. No, He's going to put a better t-ball player inside of inside your wife. Inside of your wife, yeah. If so, if you're uh, if you're a man and some dude is showing a lot of interest in your wife, it's because he wants to have sex with her. Yes. Because otherwise, that doesn't happen. No. I, I don't care about like oh, men and women can be friends. Absolutely true. I have friends that I've had for fucking decades that I've never had sex with and wouldn't probably. Well, we'll see. <laughs> but you, you you would, but you wouldn't. I probably it. I probably would, but I'm not going to go out of my way to do it. Right. But, uh, uh, and if I did it, I'd be cool with it. So keep that in mind. Uh, no, but so that's, I mean, I, I'm not going to say that's not possible, but if a dude comes into your life later and it's not like a lifelong friend or something, and he's like super cozy with your girl or whatever the fuck that dude wants to fuck her, dude, that's how it works. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like there's nothing, even if he doesn't know it, that's what his brain is trying to get. He's trying to like, uh, uh, uh get him ingratiate himself. So if anything goes wrong with you guys, he can fucking be waiting in the wings. You know what I mean? It is what it is. But don't be stupid about it. Don't don't be like, hey, I'm gonna go fucking uh, to to Alaska for a couple of days to go bear hunting. You guys should hang out. Like, yeah, no, don't man. you don't don't let it become a John Redcorn thing. I don't know who John Redcorn is. You don't watch King of the Hill? Uh oh yeah 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 that's right yep got yeah. it. Okay. You can't can't let it be a John Redcorn yep. thing. Yep. Um, but yep. so the Indians called the husband and they were like, Hey, would you, do you want maybe Terry Francona to give you a call? Like he's a fucking make a wish kid. Yeah, I know. Right. That, that's, <laughs> that part's really funny. Like imagine, imagine you fuck somebody's wife and then I offer to call and apologize <laughs> to them for it. That would be actually pretty fucking funny. <laughs> and I would do it too. I would fucking do it. I don't give a shit. Hey, sorry about that. Yeah. But the guy was like, no, yeah. <laughs> he was like, I will decline that. Uh, but Frank Hono's like, fuck this. I'm not losing my pitching coach over this. Now, at the, I, it is worth repeating at the same time, Callaway had an a actual harasser reputation in the Indians organization, right. but this one was not one of those. Right. So anyway, Callaway, fast riser, becomes the manager of the Mets. And by the way, when I first was like, I'll put this in here, I really thought it was going to be like a 10-minute thing and be like, oh, this would be a funny thing to start right. off with. But the story just keeps going well we're 31 minutes in yeah. now well we talked spring training for like the that's first true time. yeah um <laughs> callaway was hired by the mets and a, that husband right after he got hired by the mets emailed the mets and was like hey just so you know you hired a guy who's sending my wife dick pics and shit so callaway had to go through that whole song and dance again and be like no we fucked consensually it's over my wife knows i'm sorry blah 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 right uh by the way when callaway was hired by the mets uh, he t immediately texted a female Indians employee who he'd been asking out for drinks multiple times and was like, hey, can you help me uh, pack up my apartment? <laughs> Is he still married to his yeah, wife? Yeah, he's still married. So she's probably either, I mean, he didn't make that much money. So Pitching coaches are making seven figures. For sure. They make like 1.2 or so a year, but that's not like, that's not enough to stick, stick around for that abuse. I, well, I wouldn't think so. I mean, shit, that's not know, that much money. So... Is she hot? Is Mickey Calloway's wife you hot? You know, I didn't Google it, but let me... Yeah, look that up. Because I wonder if... Uh, I mean, she's... I'm, I'm sure if she's with this guy, she's probably crazy because he seems like he's pretty crazy. He's too. fucking nuts. Um, huh, I hate to say no, but... So now he's... I'm going to go with a no. You're looking at a picture of her? I think so. I got to... Let's see here. It was on uh, uh, Taiwan News. What the fuck? Oh, no. She looks... The blonde chick, she looks all right. She's okay. Yeah. But, like, for this... And I they know, have two like, girls. Oh, actually, I found a picture where she looks a lot better. Yeah, she's really cute, actually. Never mind. That was a bad... It. Don't shoot from the lower angle. Yeah. Nobody should ever do that. Yeah. So... No, she's, she is actually pretty pretty. So, uh... Matt Simple. Oh, my God. So, he told a reporter that he would share secret info about the Mets... Who he was managing yeah. at the time. Not coaching, but managing. Yes. Uh, if she would go out and fuck him, get drunk and fuck him. Yeah. Uh, multiple To multiple reporters, he did that. He was tr basically like, I'll trade inside Mets info if you come out and get drinks with me and then let me try to fuck you. And shaved his uh, pubes in another woman's face while she was interviewing him. Now, shoved. Shoved, I'm sorry. Shoved, yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I said shaved. So that'd be impressive. Actually, if anything, that's, yeah. that's just like whip out a fucking straight <laughs> razor, start shaving your pubes up. No. So she, he like, like what do you grab her head and try to hump her face or how much detail? I think he there? was just like kind of standing 
I guess everyone's kind of like half naked in the locker room anyway. Yeah. And he was kind of like standing, you know, like foot on the bench. Oh, and God. was just like, oh, hey. And he would regularly massage women reporting on the Mets in the dugout. Yeah. I mean, send shirtless selfies and then ask for shirtless pics of her back. Wow. Yeah. Uh, all usually a lot of times in the locker room and shit like that. Texted one girls or one reporter saying, I bet you look yummy on tequila. And like, I got to say, like, if you read like my flirty texts when I when I was single, they'd probably be cringe out of context. Oh, yeah. But still, man, fuck. The one text that was in the actual uh, story they had the screenshot of, he said to some female, one of the female reporters, our sleep doctor in Cleveland said you should always sleep naked, healthier for your skin and rest much better. Have to let that perfect skin breathe. Okay, time for me to get in my big comfy bed Oof. and relax. Smiley face. And by the way, not, an emo- not like an actual emoji, but yeah. like old school emoji. Uh, just have to figure out what method of relaxation will help me sleep! Exclamation point! Smiley face! Ha ha! So he likes to send risky texts for sure. Uh, yeah. In an email to a different reporter, a female, he wrote, "Quote: Let's go get drunk. I will tell you what's going on with the team." Um, and then he finally got fired by the Mets. But that was but it just, wasn't because it was performance. It was just right? being. Yeah. It was just because he because no one can turn the Mets around. So right. Why, the Mets would, are, why would he? Be yeah. Able well, to we'll do see it. this year. The Mets. They, if they can't at least fucking win a wild card this year, then they don't deserve get, to be a yeah, baseball get the team fuck anymore. Out. Yeah. Um, so once he, I guess it really like, there was a lot of stuff going on early on, but once he went over to the angels, I mean, you're in, you're in Anaheim now. Mm-hmm. That's not great, but LA is close, which is pretty great for women. I mean, you're in orange County. Orange County is okay. And you're, you're in between. I mean, if you've got a, a decent schedule, if you've got your tender settings, I guess, set on, 150 miles right you're getting san diego and la right yeah. so there's all kinds of Plus, uh, a beef a lot of, lot of, yeah, a lot of beef, beef up and down there. Uh, it's a fucking ranch so, out there so in in anaheim is where he really started getting professional with this shit he's just yes. casting he's fishing with nets at this point a continent a continent sized net like just the widest possible net you could be casting uh and this is where he got the reputation where it didn't matter what the woman even looked like he just wanted to fucking fuck somebody yeah all the time look i understand he, uh, what is this picture of him with a fucking looking like a lumberjack? So he bought a property in Florida. And this is my favorite. This is my second favorite besides the cucked husband. Oh boy. Uh, he sent a Valentine's text to one random reporter from the Mets after he was on the angels, uh, being like, I miss you guys. And then sent another text a couple months later. She responded to the second text and he immediately fired off nine pictures of himself including this one where he's shirtless holding a chainsaw. Clear, I see that one, yeah. Clearing brush on his Florida property. It's pretty good. Uh, he also sent her a picture, or I'm sorry, a video of himself shirtless on a tractor, which mm-hmm. I have to wonder who was filming that. That's a good, that's a good question, yeah. Like probably, sure. probably one of his other, <coughs> one of the other people in his harem. Um, I'm sure he was sending these pictures to the same women a lot. Um, right? He it was he, multiple women confirmed that he also sent them those pictures. This is why you use Snapchat, by the way. Yeah. Because one, you can send them all at the same time with a, with one thingy, whenever one one click, and also uh, if they screenshot it, you know. Yeah. Right. So. There. I don't think he would have cared. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Uh, what? Telegram. Yeah. Yeah. People send me. People are like, "Hey, I'm fucking added you on Snapchat." I'm like, "Look, I had that." because of black rifle back in the day and needed for marketing purposes. I do not communicate on Snapchat ever. I am a 40 year old man ever. Uh, I spend most of my time drinking Geritol <laughs> and no, uh, I'm on drugs all the time actually. But yeah, th- it's, this is, this is wild, man. This is why you, you have to update your technological capabilities as you get wealthier and more publicly exposed, right? There should, somebody should teach a class on this shit, how to get away with being a dirt bag. Yeah. Because uh, he's not doing it. Well, I feel like they kind of do that with like, like athlete, like actual athletes. Mm. But like with he never. But he was before that yeah, time, yeah. and so now he's just a coach who doesn't yeah. fucking know any better. But yeah, uh, he released. Well, a, I'm sure he knows better. Well, yeah, <laughs> just doesn't funny. give a shit. Actually, I'm I'm not sure that he knows better. I think right. it's really just not, like yeah. a reflex for him. He's like a fucking sex toddler, basically. Yeah, like his his. Emotional maturity levels is down here. Yeah, like it's his, caveman style. His I need, dick I need, is like a meerkat. Like yeah, a, yeah, it's just popping up. Oh, the pussy out here! Hey, fucking beef. Where's beef? the beef? Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Uh, we should get. We should make 
Uh, dick pic mix shirts with a where's the beef thing, but I don't know. That's a trademark, right? Where's the beef? From where's the beef is, but if you got the old lady, oh, fuck yeah, I don't what know. If, what if it was just WTB? No, I don't think the words are, are trademarked. Maybe not. But we'll the, have to look at that. We'll, yeah. we'll call Arby's today <laughs> and find out. Uh, but yeah, so he released a statement saying that he was, yes, cheating on his wife a shit ton, but never harassed anyone, despite many women saying. So basically what Cuomo said. Yeah. My customary greeting is to kiss someone. Yeah, I'm like, my- oh, is it Governor Cuomo, <laughs> you fucking dummy? Like, you know, we're all also adult human beings, and we know how to do things. We don't just make out with each other upon <laughs> right. fucking meeting the first time, you stupid fuck. Well, the funny thing, too, about the Cuomo thing is, like, I've, I've met older Italian men. Yeah, they don't. I didn't kiss see you. them kissing no. feet. Like I don't. No. I'm not. I don't only hang out with 35 year old white guys. Like no. I've met. Yeah. Met your old. Uh, next up, we've touched on this before. I, I've said this for years, and Ross is actually the person. I mean, we. I've believed this for years, but Ross is the person that wouldn't shut the fuck up about it for like the first three years I knew him. Yeah. But I really do believe this. I believe it too. But this is the. This is, I guess, the most damning thing to come out yet right. about it. Former Marlins president David Sampson says that Pujols is Albert Pujols is definitely older than he claims. Uh, Sampson was on the Dan Lebitard show. Well, first off, David Sampson was the Marlins president from 2002 to 2017. Which That's a long time there's, to be the president of baseball operations at any organization. Let alone the Marlins, yeah. who feel like they turn over every yeah. four years. That's a long time to be in one position. I had no idea anyone worked for the Marlins that long. I Even the ownership hasn't been there that long. No. Well, Any of their owners. The owners are like three years in now at this point. But like new ones, even yeah. Jeffrey Loria, did he have oh, it yeah. for, for 17 or 15 years? No, I think he came in like the late 10s or the late uh, knots, I yeah, believe. I yeah. think Samson has worked at the Marlins longer than anyone has owned the Marlins, which is insane. That's, that's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. So anyways, what we're talking about is Albert Pujols and the fact that when he came. So I'm going to pull up his fucking stats here because you're going to shit your pants. Um, his his first ten year stats are goddamned it's the, out of control. The nobody has ever even come close to these no one, stats. No. So and that includes Mike Trout, who doesn't everybody, yeah. fucking sniff it. No. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I nine, uh, tweeted ten. this out a little while ago, a couple days ago. I tweeted out like yeah. the comparisons. Yeah. So from two thousand one until two thousand ten, his first ten years in the league, every single year except for two thousand seven, he had a hundred or hundred runs. And 2007, he had 99, right? Uh, he averaged, uh, uh, let's see. And he, in 2007, for what it's worth, he was coming off a World Series, probably didn't need to try that hard. Yeah, he averaged uh, blah, 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 190 hits, right? Uh, averaged 41 home runs. So 100 runs every year, except for one year of 99. Every year, he had at least 30 home runs. Every year, he had at least 100 RBI. And every year he hit three, I think the lowest he ever hit was 312 in that whole time frame. His the average, best 10 years of baseball in history. In history. His, his average batting average over that span was like 328. It was 331. Oh, 331, okay. Yep, 331, 408 home runs, 1,230 RBIs. He only struck out 646 times. He had double the RBIs, averaging 40 home runs a year that he had strikeouts. That is fucking crazy. He also won three MVPs and the Rookie of the Year. He was MVP second place vote. Four additional times. To who? To Barry fucking Bonds. Yeah, to Barry Bonds. So he probably, if Barry Bonds doesn't shoot enough fucking shit into his body to make his head swell, he probably wins at least two more. He had five. He would have won five out of ten MVP awards. Because other than Bonds, no one was fucking close to Albert Pujols in that time frame. The early part, Griffey, and you could have actually made... You could have made an argument for Ichiro because he what he had been what he was well, doing. Was a different league though. Uh, yeah, for sure. But I'm just mean like the best player in baseball yeah. at the time because nobody had ever seen what Ichiro was doing before. Two hundred sixty fucking hits or whatever the fuck in a season. Right. Are you kidding me? Anyways, everybody has thought for a long time. There's no way a 21 year old came up and did that consistently. Now it doesn't matter to me how old he was because before this he didn't have a whole lot of professional baseball experience. He jumped right into the major leagues. And he did this. So Dude, he was playing impressive ju- either way. He was playing Juco Juco ball in Kansas City like two years before that. Yeah. Like in ninety nine, he was yep. he was at some fucking community college or something yeah. and like So if that's the premise, right? He is if the premise I don't I don't know if this guy is trying to insult him or not, but to me this is not in any way an insult. This is like, holy shit, I can't believe you're this good. Cause imagine yourself. Let's say when he when they said he was twenty one, he was actually twenty five. Right. right. That means 
uh, uh, two seasons ago in 2019, he would have been fucking 43, basically, or 44, and he hit 23 home runs and 93 RBI. Yeah. Okay, cool. With a broken body, with, a, too. with his plantar fasciitis, he can barely – like, every time he takes a step, it's like pins and needles. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think this is – one, I think they're – I think it's true. I think he's old as fuck. I think he's 50 some years old right now. We were saying that, dude, I lived in St. Louis. Like, not I grew 50, up in, but like 46 yeah, probably. I grew up in St. Louis. Like I was there when he started. And even then he looked like an old man. Everyone though. was like, he's what? He's yeah. what age? There's yeah. no fucking way. But for what it's worth, he is one of the best baseball players of all time. It really, I think he's one of the top 10 hitters of all time. Yeah. I, I, it really pains me, but I'll read the Samson, Samson quote real quick, by the mm. way. Uh, David Samson said, there is not one person in baseball, not one executive, who believes Albert Pujols is the age that he says he mm. is. And the amount of fraud that was going on in the Dominican back then, the changing of names, the changing of birthdays, it would blow your mind. Yeah. But yes. <clears throat> I. It wouldn't blow my mind. That's like everybody right. knows about that shit. It, would, it really does kind of like depress me that Pujols has been kind of like whatever since 2012. And it like people already forget that like, People do not understand how fucking good that guy was. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, bas- basically, he's played... He's he's 41 now, right? On the book. Um, yeah, on the book. Yeah, so whatever he does this year, if he even plays... I don't, is he even playing in yeah, spring training in spring right tra- now? he hit a home run the other day in spring training. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So he's Julio Franco level at this point. He's in his mid to late 40s, probably. Yeah. And good for him. I mean, holy shit. He's made... Uh, quite a bit of money. Let's see. His career earnings are three hundred and fourteen million, not including this year, which is thirty million as well. Was so, I thought that was the that just his Angels contract uh, three hundred seven million it, uh, over the course of the contract. So this is the last year. Um, it'll be three hundred. Well, he's got years. Yeah, he's still got another year left after this. Shit, Jesus Christ, man. I think that's an option. Uh, the 2022 season is an option, yeah. Now, but that would be another 30 million. So he's got another 60 million on the books. Yeah. Um, but the the checks he's cashed already 314 million. Um, and to be honest, he's put up some of the best stats of all time. There's not a whole lot of dudes that have hit that have 3,000 hits, right? Yep. And he is uh uh, what the fuck? Get out of here. He is at 3,200. Uh, 3,500 is a big number too, but I don't think he'll get there. He's got over 600 doubles. Not a whole lot of people have done that. He's got 1,800 runs. He's got over 2,000 RBI. I think only three people have done that, and that's Hank, Hank Aaron and, and Barry Bonds. No, ba- not Barry. No, not it's Barry Bonds. A-Rod. Uh, uh, yeah, A-Rod and Babe Ruth and, and now. No, now. Not, I don't think it was Babe Ruth. I think Babe Ruth did not have uh... – did he have 19 some and some change? He made, oh, no, Babe Ruth did have over 2,000. Yeah, it's 22, 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Babe Ruth, Henry Aaron, Alex Rodriguez, and Albert Pools are the yeah. only ones that I know of that have 2,000 RBI. And Albert Pools did it striking out less than any of those other guys, except for maybe Babe Ruth. He didn't really strike out that much. But that was yeah. before black people were allowed to play baseball, <laughs> so I don't really count that shit. At any rate, Pools has had one of the best careers in the history of baseball, and – you know, and even in 2015, he had 40 home runs. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah, he had a little kind of renaissance there that year. Yeah, and he's – it'll be interesting to see what he does this year. The Angels are terrible at managing their talent, so they'll probably just fucking ruin the rest of his life. Yeah. We'll see, we'll but – him. Mike it's, Trout, it's all – Yeah. Anthony Rendon went there to die. It's, mm. it's fine. It is yeah, what it is. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, next up, we have uh, something I think you'll enjoy quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in the past as well. Maybe you talk, actually, I think you talk about it on another show. Um, but MLB TV, MLB TV black, uh, blackout rules are dog shit. Yeah. I, I came across this tweet the other day that was extra hilarious. Right. Iowa, the state of Iowa, is blacked out for their six closest teams. The whole state. Right. They are blacked out for the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cubs and the White Sox, the Minnesota Twins, the Kansas City Royals, and the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, the weird thing about this is these blackout restrictions are all based on these antiquated like broadcast television network contracts. When's the last time, other than a playoff game, you watched a fucking baseball game on any network channel? It's been 25 fucking years, right? The only ones that are specific baseball channels that even exist now are Yes, TBS, and, and WGN, right? 
Not TBS anymore. Not TBS for 15 years. But they they play Fox South, I guess, is what it is yeah, now. Yeah, but Fox they South. sold that contract to Fox well, South. Well, you have, you have like, the, there are a lot of, lo- like, Fox Sports Midwest is the Cardinals. Yeah, but they, I mean, now that it's all the Fox subsidiaries, but yes. that's not, like, broadcast television anymore. No, it's cable. Not, and yeah. I would have said, not that WG and the TBS were, but they were pretty ubiquitous back in the day. That's the oh, reason yeah. there's Cubs and Braves fans all over the country yeah. because of W. Yes, never did it. They stayed in Jersey. They stayed in Northeast. Thank God. Yeah. To right. be quite honest. <laughs> but the the blackout restrictions in general are fucking nuts to me. The idea back in the day was if people can watch it from home, they're not going to come to the stadium. And that might be true a little bit. But in the, in the cities where there are professional baseball teams, people aren't choosing between going to the game and staying home and watching. They're either going to the game or they're not. Right? Right. It's, one of the, it's, it's A, B, and the fucking other option has nothing to do with it. So – from a marketing perspective, this doesn't make any goddamn sense. You're losing None. a huge chunk of an already fucking depleted audience yeah. by doing this stuff. Why? And, a, and a now at this point, you're cutting off with no the, fans. You in don't some have of the any. States. You yeah. already need young fans. Yeah. And you're cutting off the young fans from access. Well, in some states that are still locked down, you're cutting off all fans from access yes. to the game. Yeah. Like if you live in downtown LA, you have to unless you have whatever uh, uh, cable news or cable channel. That they play their games on, it's probably Fox, Cal, Fox well, actually, West or whatever. Speaking of that specifically, the Dodgers are double fucked because yeah. the deal they signed, not everyone in LA even has that provider. Yeah. So if you don't have that cable yeah. provider, you can't watch the games. Yeah. Well. You have to go to a bar in another neighborhood. Yeah. Because if that's open. Yeah. It's 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 the craziest shit I've ever seen, man. Like in Austin, not that I want to really, but you can't watch the Rangers or the Astros. Why the fuck? Would you not want the people that live around you watching every single game? I don't know. So you get the rain here. You get the Rangers because half because half of your fucking advertisements on those are local advertisements. Yes. The people that live there don't even see this. So what are these local advertisers even paying for? You know what I mean? Like right. you see, you see that half the advertisements are national from from the Fox network itself. Mm-hmm. Half of them are local from the local Fox subsidiary. The local Fox Fox subsidiary is only available to a certain percentage of the goddamn audience. Right. That is not good marketing. That's like saying, yeah, we got a bunch of stuff in the back, but I'm not going to get it for you, bitch. Fuck you. Get out of my store. <laughs> and also, I don't get it because, like, uh, presumably MLB TV, like, MLB TV doesn't show, like, you get the local feeds. Yeah. Like, if I watch the Braves here, mm-hmm. I get the Sports South feed. Yeah. And I'll get, um, you know, in-game, we'll get those, like, Atlanta or whatever right. advertisements. But when it goes to commercial break, you're not getting the local commercials. You're getting what the ads MLB TV sells. Yeah. And by the way, yeah, they MLB pause TV, for the ad. Yeah. MLB TV doesn't even barely sell ads. They barely do. You get the do. same fucking Scott's Lawn ad. Yeah. Or fucking forty or, times. Or, or it's just your program will resume yeah. shortly. Like, why are you wasting that space? Sell fucking advertising. I don't get it. I, I don't. I would rather watch a funny advertisement than look at a blank screen yeah. for fucking ninety seconds. Honestly, I know that sounds like fucking very first world problem. Yeah. But goddamn, man, I'm I'm paying for it. Entertain me, bitch. You know who else does that? Is a lot of times is YouTube TV. Oh yeah. Uh, me and my buddy were joking. It was just like Google's so rich that like you know the local lawn care company can go fuck itself. Yeah. Like the local pizza chain can just get fucked. They don't even need your money. That's how rich they are. I guess it's true though. Shit. MLB less so, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, the one big thing, uh, baseball wise, that we talk about uh, that we forgot to talk about last time, Tony Larusa, mm. back with the White Sox. Yeah, I mean that he's, it's it's like him and fucking Dusty Baker. Yeah. Right. Anytime a team's coach, well, except he goes has, wild, he's got rings. Yeah, Dusty Baker will never have a ring. No. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he was. I thought he was a good manager for a while, but uh, ran into that Angels buzzsaw. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's like either him or fucking Dusty Baker shows up when a team is in trouble, they get them through a tough period and then move. But LaRusso was working for the MLB for a while, right? Yes. He was As like their he was disciplinary the, guy or whatever. He was on the Diamondbacks. Like he was, I think he was like the president of the Diamondbacks and then moved to the MLB. And I guess, I don't know. Got Wasn't he, the, he was like their discipline czar or some shit like Something that. I don't remember like what that, it was. Yeah. Him and Joe Torre were doing shit for the MLB. Well, the White Sox are pretty fucking good, though. Yes, they so have. it's not like he's going into a shitty situation. And it's also not la- – I don't know what his mental faculties are like. He's an older guy. He's like 73, I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, up, but. but he's a pretty goddamn accomplished manager. Like, he knows how to manage baseball teams. He's 76. Teams. 76. So he's, but still, he's, he's – they have uh, 
They picked up Lance Lynn, who, you know, from the Rangers used to pitch with the Cardinals back in the day. He's a pretty good middle of the or rotation guy. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's – He's got some of these uh, other guys he's brought on. Uh, Carlos uh, and and uh, Adam Eaton is a good fucking, uh, uh, what do you call it, role player. Tim Anderson yep. is one of my favorite players in baseball, a young guy. Uh, I really enjoy watching him play. And, look, they've got some power in that lineup, yeah. too. Young Makota is the yeah. guy that the, the Red Sox, the stu- that Red Sox fans were pissed they gave up for Chris Say. I mean, they got a ring out of it so they can kind yeah. of fuck off. But. Yeah. Um, they, but they have um, – they have some real power hitting. I mean, Jose Abreu is a fucking slugger. Yeah. He's like a classic slugger. I don't know what his batting average has been uh, or what it was last year, but he's usually like a 310, 315 guy. I mean, he's he keeps it pretty at least over. Oh, he actually hit 317 last year after a couple of dip years. Um, he's 30 home runs right there, right? That's a big guy in he your hit, lineup. Here's actually, you want to some fucking wild. He hit 19 home runs last year. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, in a sixty-game season. Did he lead the league then? What did he had to Ozuna be close? Have? I'll, I'll look Ozuna up. had like sixteen or something, right? Uh, yeah, you know, I'll look up uh, home run leaders. Yeah, and fucking Tim Anderson. He's twenty-seven years old. He's a shortstop. He's a fucking, he's a three hundred hitter, man. Jose Abreu was second in the league or in the MLB with nineteen. Luke Voigt had. 22. Oh, that's right. That's right. Ozuna 22. had eighteen though. Eighteen. Yeah. So Abreu was <clears throat> fucking donging him last year. And I don't think he's going to be affected by a dead ball. We'll see if it ca- carries. Now he's a he's a big guy, yeah. but they have. There's also a bunch of young dudes on this team too. So we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, that the guy they have slated to be their DH is a one of the top prospects in all of baseball, right? right? So uh, what's his name? Uh, shit, hang on, I gotta look it up. Uh, worth noting also, they play in a dog shit division. Andrew Vaughn is his name. They're they're they made the playoffs last year. They're almost certainly going to make the playoffs this year just by playing if they play kind of career average baseball for themselves for that team yeah. like they're in the playoffs yeah i mean th- there's the indians we'll see they still have beaver <sighs> I, I don't the indians ain't, he's ain't a good he's shit. a good pitcher but i don't know i mean uh and the, the royals are not going to be competitive probably but and no. the tigers definitely are not no. but the twins you know you never know those guys oh uh, yeah the tw- yeah the twins and white Sox both both made the playoffs last year uh i, I mean the white Sox, i believe are the favorite Right now in the I would Central. assume so. They have better pitching than the Twins. Yeah. For and, sure. And La Russa, for what it's worth, as uh, like not adaptable he is to drunk driving laws, <laughs> he is uh, – like he, he's an adaptable guy. Like he knows – like he will use analytics. He mm. will – he doesn't fuck around like uh, – um, he's not like a – I guess I don't want to throw Snitker under the bus, but mm. like Bobby – Bobby Cox, Larusa was, I hate to say it, better than Bobby Cox because of course he was better because Bobby or Bobby LaRusso, did not know, he didn't know how to manage a fucking bullpen at all. Yeah, Larusa adjusts. Larusa yeah. tinkers. Cox is just you know, go get him. He tries to play the averages. It doesn't work out like that. Um, twins have a pretty good team though. I mean, they've got Miguel Sano and Jorge Polanco and 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 Jolton Simmons, who is great defense, and Josh Dolan. The left side of that, yeah, that that's a pretty good. Left side, their outfield is okay. I hope Donaldson comes back and has a good year. He was kind of hurt, I think, all last yeah. year. Yeah, he's. I, I enjoyed having him on the Braves. I, I wish he would have stayed. Josh Donaldson. I just like the energy and shit. He was a good player, and they still have Nelson Cruz over there. Who, by the way, is if if his birth certificate was fucked with, <laughs> then goddamn, he's yeah, still no hitting shit. at like a, he's still hitting at an all star, if not MVP level, right now at forty one years old. And so. he is hitting fucking skyscraper yeah. home runs. That yeah. dude. Oh, he's forty. So he's forty two. I mean, right. if it says 40, he's probably 43. But he, he hit 303 with 16 bombs last year. And the year before that, he hit 40. And the year before that, 37, 39, 43, 44, 40. And he is listed as 40 years old right now, right? Yeah. So, you know, look, this guy is 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 pretty incredible. He might hit – I feel like he's one of the guys that wants to stick around and try to hit 500. Right now, he's 83 home runs away. Oh, he will. Because so, he, he doesn't – he's not like – some other guys where it's like, well, it might fuck my average or something. Like homer home run numbers is what he's, he's already down to two seventy eight. Yeah. If he gets to five hundred, he'll probably make the whole fan, to be honest. You want to know the most painful thing about Nelson Cruz? And it doesn't even have to do with Nelson Cruz. Mm. It actually has to do with our favorite guy, Ron Washington. <laughs> Cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Uh no, no, that's Ron Washington that, is like the third base coach for the Braves now, right? In the, in the infield coach, yeah. Yeah, but he was the manager of the Rangers and he was just straight doing cocaine the whole yeah. time he was over there. And the reason 
the Rangers lost the 2011 World Series, lost game six when they should have won, mm-hmm. is uh, Nelson Cruz misplayed that fly ball from uh, right. David Freeze, I yeah. believe. Uh, Ron Washington didn't make his usual defensive substitution that inning. In the seventh or whatever? No, the, in the ninth. bottom of the seventh? In the ninth. Oh, it was in the ninth. Bottom of the ninth. Didn't make his usual defensive substitution that he had been doing all year because he wanted Nelly Cruz on the field for the World Series. Yeah. No. And they didn't win <laughs> no. it. No. Why was Nelson Cruz in the outfield in the fucking first place? He should have been DH for that whole game. Played in St. Louis. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm. Mm, I mean, I get it, I guess, but you don't no. fucking risk that, <laughs> Fuck dude. That. If, the, if Brian Snicker did that, you would take that rifle to Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ruben Snyder saying that Nelson Cruz will not get in since he was convicted of PDs. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, I just don't he'll, care. He'll get, a, he'll get the, uh, the players. Player, vote. Yeah. yeah, I just don't care about that shit, to be honest. It's everybody was doing drugs back then, and you judge people based on the talent that's available at the time, right? Like yeah. you. Alan Trammell is in the Hall of Fame. Right. He should not be in the Hall of Fame. I'm sorry. I like the guy. He and Lou Whitaker, the fucking four to six to three double play. Sweet. Fucking blah, well, blah, blah. I don't care, man. He the, was not good enough to be in the Hall of Fame. The other thing, too, is like you still know that about yeah. them, right? Yeah. And you know, like when you see, you know, if you want to compare, like, oh, well, you know, uh, Roger Clemens had one less win than Greg Maddox. So maybe they're the same. And then you mm. can be like, well, Roger Clemens was shooting shit into his ass for fucking yeah, 15 yeah. years. Yeah. So maybe reevaluate what you think about Roger but Clemens. Who, but I mean, we don't, we also don't know what Greg Maddox was doing. Not to, not to accuse him of anything. I don't think his style of pitching would have been assisted by that. Really. He's a, he's a freak of nature. I, if, if I would guess Maddox on anything, it'd be like Adderall or greenies or something. Probably. Yeah. But he's autistic. Right. So I, I don't know if he would be taking anything. Yeah. To be honest, he's just a fucking weirdo. Yeah get some of the benefits and still be able to communicate normally. Right. Like me, I guess, right. you know what I mean? I guess it's, I'm pretty fortunate, but anyways, yeah, that's, we'll see. We'll see about all that shit. I don't know. I, I think sometime 15 years from now, everybody from this era that was suspected of or caught using PDs is going to get in. Yeah. I mean, they should honestly, anyone that's doing that, they should have gone the shilling route and just been like, you know what? Fuck the writers. Yeah. I'll leave it to the players. We're trying to get Kurt Schilling on the show right now. Cause I want to hear him firsthand talk about that because I, I i know what he's going to say already that the respect of his peers means more than a bunch of fat old white writers right. which is great but i want to hear him talk about right it, right yeah because he's an interesting guy now last before we get out of here we were talking earlier about spring training and why it matters to you or why it doesn't right clearly you don't give a shit about spring training not typically no i got other things going on sports mm-hmm. wise and it's just I don't know. They're exhibit. I try to get excited at it, but at this point, like I, I'll tell you this, I was way more into it. Like when I was in my fraternity house mm. as a 20 year old, yes, ESPN would be on spring training as I was sitting in the TV room between classes and I'd be like, cool baseball. But now I'm yeah. like, I work a job. Like I just don't fucking care. I like it. to keep up with some of the, like I, I pay attention, not just to my team, but I'm a, I'm a fan. So this plays out more in football because I really didn't grow up watching any particular team. Like I had, family members that were 49ers fans. Uh, I had family members that were Cowboys fans. I had family members that were Bears fans. So I just grew up watching kind of hard-nosed football, but they were all really successful teams back then, right? Right. So I, you know, I just enjoyed the game itself. And I was a baseball player, and I love baseball. I'm a Braves fan, but I also love the game. So <clears throat> I like to watch some of the young kids that are coming up and see what the future is going to look like because – that uh, a Rosarina kid from Tampa Bay. If I don't know if that was some kind of flash in the pan, if he comes back and hits like that again, holy shit! Right. Well, right. didn't like that's he, a, he that, a he, his whole year was good, right? Not just yes, the playoffs. Everything because yes. like, it, you know you could get fooled. It could be a BJ Upton playoffs. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah and that does happen, and then you give him a fucking five year deal <laughs> right. for eighty four million dollars for no fucking reason. Yeah. Uh, uh, and who's the other kid from... Uh, Wander Franco. Wander Franco. God He damn. hit a fucking moonshot the other day. That dude, I swear to God, is switch hitting Alex Rodriguez. That's terrifying. Yes. He, he, he crushes the ball from both sides of the plate. He's not as big as A-Rod was. A-Rod's, what, 6'3", like probably yeah, fucking A-Rod's a, 205, a piece, something like yeah. that. He's a big guy for a shortstop. I don't think uh, Wander Franco is that big. Hold on, let me look at him and tell him. No, he was kind of stout from the video I saw. He's a, he's a buff dude, but I don't think he's... I don't think he is that large of a human being. Hold on, let me see if I can find his goddamn. He's five ten. Oh, he's five ten. So he's probably five ten, like a buck eighty. 
He's still buck, a kid, right? Buck eighty nine, yeah. yeah. And he's twenty. I don't believe a buck eighty nine, but yeah, um, yeah. He he's he is going to be a unless he gets hurt a Hall of Fame baseball player. I really enjoy because I watched Chipper Jones. I, I grew up in Greenville, South Carolina. He came through the Greenville Braves. So did Ryan Klesko. So did yeah. Javi Lopez. So did fucking uh, not John Smoltz, but uh, uh, Glavin did. Yeah. Right. So as a child, I get to watch all these people come through, and it kind of ingrained in me. Uh, uh, it was I enjoyed seeing the player early on and being like, you know what, that kid's probably gonna do well. Like I knew Klesko right. would get to a certain level and then peter out because he's got a fucking big long looping swing. That shit doesn't work. Lope- he was kind of always a fat guy too. Like yeah, <clears throat> but Javi Lopez, people forget about how good of a career he had. He wasn't Mike Piazza, but and he got overshadowed by Mike. nobody remembers Javi Lopez because of Mike Piazza. Oh, but as a Mike, kid, I Javi mean, Lopez had a fucking incredible career. I, would, I was proselytizing. The, the book of Javi Lopez yeah. as a kid. I'd be like, you don't understand. Although I'm pretty sure he was roided out in 03. When oh, he yeah. fucking raked. Yeah. What, he had like 40 sure. home runs? Yeah. But he had 260 for a career. And he was he was one of those cat Like back then, catchers were catching like maybe 120 games a year. Mm-hmm. Right? He was in like 135, 145 oh, area. Yeah. Which so he, was, he was a very in shape dude. And he, I just enjoyed it. He caught every game except for Maddox's. Pretty much, yeah. Because Eddie Perez would pop Eddie in. Eddie Perez for, or the, before that was... Uh, Damon Barry Hill, I think. Okay. That's too that young was for me. Early 90s, yeah. yeah. But yeah, there it, it's I like to see those young guys come up. I watched Andrew Jones run through the fucking minor league system. Like he that season what was it? 97, I think. He hit 38 combined home runs in the minors or something like that between 96, I think. between A ball and then well, yeah, was it 96? 96 is when he hit the two home runs in the World Series. Mm. As, like, as a 19-year-old. Yeah. And 97, weirdly, we got yeah, Kenny right. Lofton. And put him in center. Yeah, and why? So Andrew was in. I think, Andrew right. Jones is the best defensive center fielder, except for uh, uh, Willie Mays, that's ever existed. Right. I've never seen anybody play like that before, now or then. Uh, Jim Edmonds was he had he had the talent, but he didn't have the fucking wheels like those guys did. Everything, every amazing Jim Edmonds diving catch you see, Andrew Jones gets standing up. Yeah, exactly right. But he was a great. You you put Andrew Jones' legs under Jim Edmonds, and it's the, he's the best of all time without yeah. question. Edmonds right? had a better bat. Yeah, well, that's that's definitely true too. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at the minor league shit for him. When you're anyway, it doesn't matter. It, Andrew Jones came up and he hit like I think it was 38 home runs between A ball and Double A, and they were like, "Fuck Triple A, <laughs> right. just come up here and fucking hit two home runs in the first game of the season well, or th- also, the World Series or be, whatever." Be useful because all these dumbasses are going to throw you like goosey fastballs. Yeah, right. Just to see if you can hit it, and you can. Yeah. So. Yeah, he did pretty well with that. So that's why, for me, spring training is really interesting because I look – those are the stories I'm looking for. I'm looking for pitchers that are coming back from injuries, like uh, Otani, for example, came out in his first appearance. He hit 97. Okay, good. His arm's still fine. Right. He's going to have a successful year. I still think that they're fucking misusing him over there, but that's fine. Those are the th- That's why I love it. And I like seeing that guy like Evan Gaddis, right? What was that, 2000 fucking six or some shit? No, that was like 2010. 2000. Was it that I, no, actually, no, I was living here. It was Ev- like 12, 13. Evan, Evan Gaddis was like a fucking top five round draft pick. Yeah. A lot of people like this guy. Ended up fucking being some dumb drunk car mechanic for three a years. A janitor. A janitor, yeah. yeah. He wasn't doing shit. And all of a sudden, someone's like, hey, you want to play baseball? He goes, yeah, I guess, fuck it. <laughs> Comes up and just starts fucking destroying the ball. No batting gloves i don't even know if he had clothes on to be honest i wasn't paying attention <laughs> he he's got these big gorilla hands and he's just a man that was made to be an athlete right yeah. that's what he was put uh, put on his earth for i love seeing stories like that guys that come back and fucking really do it because he he had some pretty good fucking seasons not just for the he, braves yeah well you want to i think he won a world too. series with the yeah. astros as honestly as much as i hate the astros for, actually i don't hate the astros for cheating at all i think it's a, a charming part of baseball mm. but but part of me was like you know what thanks for getting gaddis and mccann a ring yeah I'm I appreciate down with that. it. I mean, Evan Gaddis played one, two, three, four, five, six seasons. His rookie year, he was 26. Yeah. Because he had washed out. He was a big time A&M player. Mm-hmm. And then washed out, was a janitor. And then yeah. someone was like, hey, you know you're a gorilla, right? Yeah. Yeah. He So he came back and played six seasons in Major League Baseball. Other than one season when he was hurt, he had 20 home runs every year. Yeah. And he had 139 home runs in six seasons. I would love to. 32 uh, home runs per year basically his on a 162 game average i feel like he had a uh uh fucking like just 
military level exit velocity on his yeah ball. it's i mean he crushed the ball he he averaged only 400 at bats but 23 home runs a season yeah like the best home run one of the most impressive home runs i've ever seen is he took dan who was the guy on the phillies who was throwing gas in like 10 11 12 hot he took some guy like above that's the when strike they had zone. holiday and all oswald right uh, it was a hundred mile an hour pitch Fire. above the strike zone i don't remember he hit it like 450 yeah, feet. Could he, be Greg Myers, yeah. He hit it to the like terrace. Yeah, he dead I mean, center. Just bat speed. Yeah. I mean, he. El Oso Blanco. Yeah, he's. I, I really enjoyed. So those. I, I love seeing shit like that because I had no idea who the fuck that dude was before the season started. And all of a sudden, he's in spring training. And I saw him. It was actually an out, right? But it was um, a fastball about chest high. And he hit it as if he was hitting a ball right down the middle. He didn't change. He wasn't tomahawking. He just fucking lifted his shoulders up and hit it like that. And it was a line drive to center field, and the guy caught it. But I was like, what the fuck did I just witness? <laughs> I was like, is that weird? some weird thing? But no, he did that his whole career. There's some guys that are just athletic freaks like that that have such good, so, so much raw power and then such good hand-eye coordination. Like Vladimir Guerrero is the best example of all time of that shit. You could throw the ball fucking six counties over and that motherfucker's going to fling the bat at it somehow hit a double. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, it's a shame he retired when he was 37. He could have kept, but yeah. chances are he was probably 45. Let's be real. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, fuck. He's already got a like grown ass man in the major leagues with, with Guerrero in particular. I was like, what? How? Oh, that kid already? is my MVP. Like look at watch, watch at least one blue Jays spring training game with him playing and look at his body this year. He's going to be the MVP this year in the American league. Guaranteed. That's a good bet. If you can find that on my book, you it can is go on, look at it. It is on there. All the, all the odds are out there already. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, definitely throw it down on Guerrero. I mean, because s- it's all plus. Yeah. Like, you, it's, it's like going to be five to plus, one odds. Yeah, yeah it's going to be five, six to one odds at worst. Oh, he was 36 when he retired. Vlad was 36 with 449 home runs when he retired and 2,590 hits because he fucking doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. I guess because Never let me, look shit about anything, let me scroll know. further down the page and I'll tell you why. Uh, the $130 million he made. <laughs> Right, and he's from fucking uh, uh, the DR. He doesn't give a shit. Yeah, he's living the dream. Plus, that kid of his is gonna make probably five hundred million. Oh, that yeah. family's set for a while. Yeah, those MLB contracts are massively outpacing oh, inflation. Yeah, he rode a bicycle to his tryout. Who Vlad? Vlad did? Yeah, or Vlad Jr. No, Vlad. Like when he was like fourteen, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, uh, that's what like, they do. He was a child. No, like, like thousands literally. of miles on a bicycle. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. Like as a child, though, not like. Not like as an 18-year-old. He did that. People don't reckon, or realize that a lot of these really great Dominican and uh, Puerto Rican players get signed when they're like 14, 15 years old, oh, yeah. right? Like Raphael for Call yeah. was 14, I think, when he got signed the first time. And it's not crazy. to mention, they don't grow up like a soft-ass American. No, no. Playing they're not banning Dr. Seuss books over there. No, they, they're trying not to get knifed in an yeah, alleyway. Well, even just on the field, like there's stories like – they're playing in flip flops. They're using oh, yeah. diapers as gloves. I played in uh, for something called uh, the uh, well. It was it was uh, we we went down with a team and played against all like the all star teams when I was seventeen. Um, it was a Roberto Clemente All Star program, right? Yeah. So they took all the best AAU players out of the U.S put us on teams and took us down to Puerto Rico. We just stayed there for a month and played baseball against all their best teams. Oh, it was fuck. the best. It was between my junior and senior years. The best thing that ever happened to me, to yeah. be honest. Um, they had some nice shit down there at that point, but that was like, what was that? 98. Yeah. Before that, when a lot of these guys were coming up, it was like, well, and by the way, Puerto Rico would be way better than the, the DR. Yeah. yeah. DR sucks. Yeah. Um, and it's poor. We had, we actually had two games in DR, but there was bad weather. So we couldn't take the boat over. Or whatever the fuck. So right. I was like, that sucks. Because it was supposed to be part be it was supposed to be part of the whole thing. It was a cruise ship. We were gonna go yeah. over to the DR and then play some games in and then come back. Fuck. And I was seventeen, right? Yeah. It was fucking cool as shit. Could've no, gone to a cockfight. Yes. Yeah, actually we thought about it. But <laughs> there is a in San Juan, you've you've been to San Juan, right? No. So in, in San Juan, right next to the casino, there's a big fucking uh dome looking arena, but it's not big. It's like the size of this building. Right. Maybe a little bit bigger than this building, but it's not like the size of a full basketball arena. I'm like that looks too small to play basketball. And the guy's like, oh, it's chickens. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? He goes, yeah, chickens. They fight chickens. I'm like, oh, God. Let's go. <laughs> All right. It was weird. But good. half of the dudes that were on my team, because it was randomly selected people from all 
you like you they they you were scouted right so they knew what position you played and blah right. blah so they just put you on based on your position on teams half the dudes on my team were 18 legal drinking age in puerto rico was 18 right oh, so they were all just like Bleh. no yeah. i mean they just bought booze and brought it back to oh, the cool. hotel we were at the ritz carlton and fucking san juan <laughs> getting shit housed in the middle of the goddamn day it's fucking great good times sounds wonderful it was yeah uh that's all we got for this week thank you as always for listening and watching please we're still growing the drinking bro sports channel so uh make sure to like and subscribe on youtube and um, wherever you get your mm. podcasts uh if you're on the for podcast for audio specifically uh Leave a five-star review. Like, it's not by listens. It's by you guys, like, giving reviews and shit like that. So please do that as well. And uh, if you have any uh, baseball fan friends, uh, uh, definitely pass this shit around. You, this is we, we haven't been doing a baseball show before, right? No, this is the second one. The but second. I mean, like, pr prior to this season. Oh, no, no, no. This season's the first. We're yeah. also going to be on um, – thanks to all you who have uh, – Put your contact info in for the fantasy baseball shit. We'll get that going here in the next couple of weeks whenever we get it figured. I mean, we're still yeah. a month you, away You don't want to draft shit. too early anyway. Oh, fuck no. We're not drafting until the week before the season yeah, starts. Yeah, The last uh, thing you want yeah. is some asshole to tear an ACL or, or whatever the fuck. No, fuck like, that. Know, Tommy John. Yeah. yeah. that Yeah, drafting this early fucking yeah. sucks. But we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll get that going probably two and a half, three weeks from now. And keep uh, – you can find that post in Drinking Bros Sports on uh, Facebook. Yeah, so is it pinned? I don't think it is. Uh, we Probably might need to pin that. To pin that yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, drop your comment in there um, saying you're down because, um, you know, we're down to take as many of you as I will take as many of you as I can. In, as your, in your mouth. Yeah. Mouth, whatever. There's a lot of holes over here, guys. Uh, yeah. So I'll pin that to the top of your Good Well Sports private Facebook group. What is it, about 8,000 people in there now? Yeah. It's about um, that. Yeah. So. And the deal is the same as football, like cool prizes and shit for whoever yeah. wins every league and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and if you've got any, uh, don't use that post to do it because we don't want to get too littered, but keep it in the back of your mind if you've got any ideas on what the prizes should be because we haven't bought them yet. Usually it's yeah. jerseys or, or signed balls or pictures or some shit like if that. If you want a picture of Mickey Calloway's penis, we will do our best. We'll try, yeah. <laughs> we I'll really will. I'll reach out to that reporter and see if we can get it done, yeah. We'll see. Well, yeah. Uh, Anyway, that's uh, that's about it. Thank you guys for listening, yep. and we will catch you. Uh, so we're doing it once a week until the season starts, and then yep. I think we're going Monday, Thursday. Yeah. Once the season does start. Yeah, Monday will be like the weekend game recap, or I'm sorry, Monday will be like kind of the fantasy for that week, and then Thursday will probably be the fucking week recap because Monday yep. and Thursday are probably I think they're going to be the off days, the the typical off days yeah. this year. So. A couple couple games, but those are usually the light yeah. the light days yeah. on the MLB schedule. So, yeah, thank you guys for uh, watching and listening, as always, for Dan Holloway at Dan Holloway's Rifle. <laughs> I am Rob Fox, and uh, we'll catch you.